One of the more common complaints I'll see in the office is shoulder pain. And um, most of the shoulder complaint patients usually are coming in with some sort of rotator cuff pathology. Uh, the rotator cuff is a set of muscles around the shoulder that helps move the arm in certain ways and helps stabilize the shoulder. Um, there's four different tendons. Uh, the more commonly injured ones are called the supraspinatus, but um, rotator cuff tears can occur from either an acute injury, like a slip and fall, fall off a ladder, land on an arm, car accident, um, sports injury, or probably more commonly it's more of a degenerative injury, kind of over time, overuse, repetitive injuries, things can accumulate over time. When we get imaging, we start with x-rays and that's more looking at the bony structure and most of the time the pathology doesn't have anything to do with that, it's more of a soft tissue injury. Uh, so these require MRIs to kind of diagnose. On exam you can get an idea, but the MRI is what confirms that how the MRI comes back, it'll show the rotator cuff either being inflamed and thickened, uh, some people have partial tears where it's incomplete tear, and then some people have full tears. Um, the most common complaints pain, but it could be pain with motion, it could be weakness, pain with certain positions and activities. Most of the time we'll start off with non-operative treatment, as for most people non-operative treatment really kind of calms things down. Um, Surgical treatments obviously reserved for people who have gone through some of the non-operative treatment and just continue to have daily limiting pain. Some people who have full thickness tears still would pretty, pretty much be asymptomatic, but um, the bigger the tear, the less likely non-operative treatment will, will work. Because non-operative really we have time, medicines, physical therapy, maybe a shot of cortisone. And, and for the less involved injury, I think more often than not, they'll get better with non-operative measures. And even some partial tears, uh, they'll still require surgery because no matter what we do, they just still have pain or limitations. Um, but usually the bigger tears are ones that do not respond as well to, to non-operative measures. Most of the time, the way I do it is an arthroscopic procedure. So there's usually three incisions about a centimeter or less. Um, it's outpatient surgery, it takes about an hour to an hour and a half at most. Um, they'd go home in a sling, kind of immobilize the shoulder for the first few weeks. Um, therapy starts within a week or two of the procedure and probably proceeds for the first two, three months. I usually only have people in slings for the first three to four weeks with a maximum about six. Um, but the goal by three months is to have gotten full motion back. I usually tell people full recovery can take even six months to a year in terms of normal strength, normal activities, no lingering pain after exercise or activity. Um, so it's a long recovery, um, but the goal down the line is no restrictions, no limitations, you know, can proceed to any and all activities. My goal is to see someone who's active, whether it's with exercise around the house, gardening, yard work, housework. Um, people who have rotator cuff injuries can't even do what they'd like to do on a daily basis, even laundry or washing dishes without pain. So my goal is to get people back just to do their day to day. The bonus is when they can go back and work out in the gym or play basketball, pick up with friends or in an in a adult league. Um, younger patients, same thing. I mean, the benefit of being younger is they usually recover a little bit more quickly. Um, but most of the people who end up with rotator cuff surgery are, I'd say, 40s and above. Um, but the, the majority of people are happy because the, the people who have it at the worst, they can't even sleep a night without pain. And just to hear someone can sleep through the night again is pretty comforting for me. And the bonus would be getting back to working out in the gym, mowing their lawn, hanging curtains, painting the room. Those are all things we take for granted when we don't have pain. And when you're really feeling it and limited to not being able to do those activities, it changes your life. I think certain people get to the doctor at different points for everybody. You know, some people work through it and say, I'm gonna give it another month or I'm gonna lay off of things for a month and see how I do. Some people follow things for years, some people follow things for months, and then some people wake up with the pain on Monday, they come into the office on Tuesday. Yeah, the one thought is if you do have something that's kind of small and not that big of a problem now and you kind of ignore it and work through it,
it definitely can progress because the tears can't repair themselves. That's the hard, I guess the bad thing about rotator cuff tears is there's no way for your body to kind of mend something that's torn. Um, so it can only get worse as time goes, it just can't get better. There are some hesitancy in my mind in, in terms of watching a full thickness tear because over time changes occur in the shoulder so the muscle that's attached to the tendon that tears can actually start to atrophy and shrink up or turn into fat the muscle turns into fat it's called fatty change and once you see those changes on MRIs you kind of miss the boat and sometimes even if you proceed surgically the outcomes aren't as good as they might have been had you gotten to it a little bit earlier.